Hello everybody, today we'll talk about what is an accelerometer. An accelerometer is an instrument that measures acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, and velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So accelerometers are useful in detecting and measuring vibrations. So there are types of accelerometers based on the working principle. So we have three types, piezoelectric, piezoresistive, and capacitive. Piezoelectric accelerometers, as the name suggests, uses the piezoelectric effect, that is, produce electricity in response to a load. Piezoresistive uses a piezoresistive effect, which is to increase resistance in response to a load. And capacitive accelerometer uses change in electrical capacitance to determine the acceleration. So let's talk about piezoelectric effect in detail. Piezo is a Greek word which means to squeeze. So when piezoelectric materials are strained by an external force, it produces an output electrical charge. Now, quartz crystal is a naturally occurring piezoelectric material, but there are several man-made piezoelectric material, which is, for example, polycrystalline ceramic. So you have this is a construction of a typical triaxial accelerometer. So you have here the seismic mass, the piezoelectric crystal. It can be man-made or naturally occurring. You know, the price will depend on that. And then you have the connecting wires, which is going out to the data acquisition. You have this outer casing. And these are the directions that the accelerometer is measuring. So usually this is like the right-hand thumb rule. So the Z represents your thumb finger, the X your index finger, and Y the middle finger. So usually the accelerometers have these directions engraved on their surface. For example, here it'll be like Z, here it'll be like Y, and on the other side that you cannot see will be X. So it means that the accelerometer is measuring those directions if you mount them, you know, in according to this right-hand thumb rule. Now let's talk about the working principle. So when it when you're when you are connecting the accelerometer and it's actually measuring vibrations, it's actually experiencing load, and the seismic mass causes stress on the sensing piezoelectric crystals. So in response to this load, the piezoelectric crystals generate an electrical output. Now this output is collected and transmitted by wires to you know to the data acquisition system. So when you're actually measuring the seismic mass puts the load on these crystals, which produce an electrical charge and which travels to your data acquisition system. So there are a lot of conversion that take place and finally you see the accelerometer accelerations there. Now let's talk about mounting methods. There are several ways to mount accelerometers, but first you need to ensure that the surface where you want to mount the accelerometer is clean and smooth. You need to maintain a high degree of surface contact in order to ensure high acceleration transmissibility. Because at the end of the day, we're interested in measuring the accelerations on the test structure. So we don't want to lose information. So we need to have high transmissibility so that the accelerations that the structure is experiencing is captured by the accelerometer as is so that we can investigate what the problem is. So if you mount the accelerometer improperly, you will lose data, you will get erroneous results. So there are several types of mounting. One is stud mounting, screw mounting, adhesive mounting, or magnetic mounting. Now in adhesive, you have wax or super glue. So there are also sensitivities and ranges of the accelerometers. They have different values. For example, some sensitivities are like 10 millivolt per G, 100 millivolt per G, and ranges are like plus minus 500, 1000, and usually you see in Gs, but you can also have a different unit, which is millivolt per meter per second square, because G is nothing but the acceleration to gravity, and we're approximating it as 10. But then, you know, you can also have the sensitivity values because, for example, you have the sensitivity value as 10 millivolt per G, but then 1G is almost 10. So if you plug in you, you the same value in a different unit, it'll be like 1 millivolt per meter per second squared. So you need to be careful with the units. So how do we measure the accelerometer, accelerations? So first, you mount the accelerometer on a flat, clean and smooth surface to ensure high degree of transmissibility. Connect the accelerometer via BNC cable to the data acquisition system. Check the sensitivity, dynamic range, all the units, and also for each axis in case of a triaxial accelerometer, record the measurement and perform the analysis. So first, you may see something like a level analysis, which is just how the vibration level is varying with respect to time. So on the x-axis, we have the time scale. On the y-axis, we have the acceleration. So in this case, it's meter per second square. So we see that how is it varying with respect to time. But we can see the same uh, y-axis in a different unit, which is g. So in the first case, I'd seen in meter per second square. And if I simply divide those values by 10, I can see in g. Now, I'm more comfortable with g because g, I can relate to the acceleration to gravity on Earth. 
So that is more comfortable, but yeah, it, you can use any uh, any of those units you want. At the end of the day, the acceleration doesn't change just because you change the units. You're just viewing it a different unit. The next is a spectral analysis. So it's more like a frequency spectrum of the acceleration. So level versus time is simply we're seeing how the accelerations vary with respect to time, but we're also interested in what frequency component is present in that acceleration signal. So this is important. We're seeing here again, we see on the y-axis, it's acceleration in Gs, and on the x-axis, you have frequencies. So there are different types of accelerometers. Uh, the most common ones are uniaxial and triaxial that we do use on common applications like automotive testing or structural testing. But there are also some special accelerometers. For example, if you want to use on, you know, exhaust systems, it's going to be pretty high, uh, pretty hot, and you cannot use a regular accelerometer because it might damage. So you need a special high temperature accelerometer. So it has some water cooling uh, with some uh, connections. You also have cryogenic accelerometer. So it's the opposite of high temperature, like extreme low temperatures, and you still want the accelerometer to be working. You have seat pad accelerometer, shock accelerometer, and many more. So there's one interesting thing, which is the damping and mass addition. What if uh, you're pasting the accelerometer, or mounting the accelerometer in the test structure, and that is influencing the uh, structure's natural frequency? That should not be the case. So when the test object has a mass and size comparable to the size of the accelerometer, the accelerometer is going to influence the measurement. So if the test object is so small and the mass of the accelerometer is you know, close to the test object itself, then it might as well change the uh, spectrum as well. So in such a case, the accelerometer may dampen or alter the natural frequency of the system. So it can change it. So one recommended solution is to use a miniature accelerometer, which is like it's pretty tiny and, you know, it has very less mass. But then if, if that is not, if that is still influencing your measurements, uh, the best bet is to use a laser accelerometer because uh, it's also called a laser vibrometer. In that case, you're actually using laser or light to measure the ex vibrations on the surface, so you're removing the influence of mass completely. All right, so what are the applications? You have automotive vibration measurements. You can also measure vibrations on turbines, pumps, etc. And it's used also used to represent landscape or portrait views on a smartphone. So those are the applications. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.